Hello, fellow divine feminines. This is sort of a message, sort of, I want to call it like an intuitive channeling. Um, I've done some of these before in this channel, but it's been a little while. And it's funny because I keep thinking like, oh, I should do some cards and do this and that, but I already know what the message is. Um, and it's funny because it's tied into the new Lizzo song, Are You Ready to Be Loved? If you have not heard it, definitely listen to it. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's funny. Like, let's put it this way. I don't know what wave this is. I don't know exactly what the timing is for your particular twin flame journey, but I can definitely feel like a buttload of masculines. You know, it's funny. I was just thinking, how do we quantify what a buttload is? I don't know. A lot. There's a lot of masculines that are, they're coming into their divine masculine state, you know, like there's a lot of readers and intuitives and people that have been on the journey that talk about like a divine masculine wouldn't treat you poorly. That does not necessarily mean that you have sensed, you know, incorrectly about who your divine masculine is. It just means when, you know, when they're not acting divinely, they are not in divine energy. So they're not in divine masculine energy. They're in wounded masculine energy, right? But at some point on their journey, they will come into their divine masculine energy. And it's funny because like, when I first realized that I was on this journey, like, and looked back at everything and went, damn, <laughs> like I, one of the first um, intuitives that I listened to was Fire Grace. And she talked a lot about like what you want to focus on is not what is going on in the right now of things. What you want to focus on is getting yourself ready for the moment ahead when your divine masculine is also ready. And she used to talk about like, you know, don't worry about the timing or the speed or the pace, like, especially not with divine masculines. Like, for a lot of divine feminines, it can feel like almost like a slower journey, like one foot in front of the other. And it's not that it does not necessarily feel that way for divine masculines, but when you're on this side of the fence, it can look like they go from like tortoise speed to hare speed, like in a fraction of a second. You're like, how the heck did you do all that work in that short amount of time when it took me, you know, months, years, etc., to get there. And part of that is just kind of a weird magic of the journey. Um, and also it, you know, it's part of having that faith, like having faith in the 5d, having faith in what your heart and your intuition says, no matter how the 3d is going. Right. And so for those of you that are still with me, if you, if you're still with me, you hear what I'm saying, then this message is likely for you because part of the message that I'm sensing is like, there are still a lot of divine feminines out there that like, say, you know, I or other readers, intuitives, coaches put out a positive message or a channeling from DMs that's sweet. Or, you know, we talk about some of the stuff that masculines have been going through in their karmic cycles and there'll be divine feminines that are like, oh, well, I'm done with this or I'm never going back or this and this and that. And it's like, if that's where you're at, then, then stop listening now. You're not ready. You're not there. And it, you know, whoever you're thinking about is either not your divine masculine or you're just not in a space where you're going to line up with them in that energy. Like with the twin flame journey, you don't line up with your twin flame when you're not ready for it. And so it's kind of leading back to that song. Are you ready to be loved? You know what I mean? Um, and it's one of those, you know, when your twin flame is ready because you feel ready and not ready in that desperate, why aren't they ready yet? I'm ready. I want love now. I want this and that ready. No, like ready as in you feel good about life. You feel good about the world. You feel good about your twin, no matter what they're doing. You know, you may have got, had to have gone through a thousand ego deaths, a thousand surrenderings, a thousand letting it go to spirit you know, calling it back in, letting it go, doing all of the different dances that go along with your particular journey. But you feel good 
about wherever you are and not in a bitter or a spiteful way, not in a holier than that way. Like you feel in harmony with yourself, with the world around you, with the people around you. You're not in an unhealthy space where you don't talk to anyone. You have no social, you know, you have no friends or anything like that. You're not in a space where you're not taking care of yourself. Like you practice good self-care, you practice mindfulness, you feel good about the opportunities in front of you. You feel good about how your story has gone up to this point, even if not all of the parts are beautiful and stuff, but you feel in union with yourself. And it feels like that's that Lizzo song, Are You Ready to Be Loved? Like, a lot of what I get from that song is like, we get into this space where it's like, we say we want love, but then we're not ready for it, right? And we could get soulmate after soulmate, we, even our twin flame can come in a bunch of times and offer us the love that we say that we want, that we say that we're ready for, that we say that we could handle when it comes there, and we push it away. Either we don't believe it, or we're suspicious of it, or we're still thinking about how mom or dad or exes treated us or did things like that. And somehow, energetically, we push it away. And that can manifest in all sorts of ways, right? You know, it could manifest in them like, oh, yeah, I knew that you were lying to me and you were still seeing the karmic or that you were doing something to help the karmic or that you still had other side feminines or whatever thing like whatever it is whatever you believe to be true usually you find that it's true isn't it so if you're in that space of still being suspicious still you know being worried about being hurt still wondering whether you should stay or wait faithfully or let go or go find someone else or you know will they hurt me won't they hurt me like you're you're not in a space where you're ready and aligned for your divine masculine you know and not, let me change that, not for your divine masculine, for yourself, you know? I, I posted something in the community section the other day. It's like, focus on yourself, and the universe will focus on you too, right? But here's the thing. If you're focusing on yourself in a negative way where you don't feel like you are worthy of what you want, of what you're calling in, that you don't feel like you're, you can trust what's coming towards you, then that's what you're going to manifest as something that you can't trust, right? So the way to get yourself ready is to get into that space where you're thinking about you in positive ways, where you look at yourself in the mirror and, and you find yourself attractive. I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, wanting to make love to yourself, although that would be interesting, wouldn't it? But you feel good about who you are. You feel good about your connection to you. And you can imagine, like, like think about how Abraham Hicks talks about getting into the vortex, right? Like, you can go to that space in your mind and you can picture yourself being loved. And if you want it to be by your divine masculine, or if you feel like that's naturally energies that you're getting visions of or seeing signs of, if you can go to that space and imagine yourself being loved in the ways that you know you deserve to be loved, you know, whether that's being talked to respectfully and, and having them want to know you on a deeper level, whether that's apologies for various things, whether that's uh, proof that the journey is real and that they know it and they're conscious of it and they support it, whether that's, I don't know, like sunsets on a beach, you know, like whatever it is that comes into your mind, if you can imagine that, and you feel good about it, then that's when this resonates. That's when you're ready to be loved. And so part of the message coming in from these divine masculines to those of you divine feminines who feel like you are in that ready to be loved space. <laughs> it's funny though. What came, what, what came in was like, hold on to your knickers, you know, like <laughs> it almost keep your panties on, but at the same time, like Trish, just try to keep your panties on. Like a lot of these masculines are coming in with this, like, not heavy wooing energy, but they, like, they recognize that 
you hold yourself to higher standards than any other feminine that they know. And if you've had interactions with them before, if you are in like separation from having had relationship with them before, like they recognize that while you are open to them and you are faithful to them, that you also are still going to hold yourself to higher standards with them and that they're definitely going to need to earn it. And like some of these masculines might come in hot and heavy at first, like, and they're aware that you're not going to tear them a new one. Like that's still, there's still a little bit of fear in the back of their minds, but through whatever it is that you've been through, whatever your journey has entailed with them, they're aware that you're not going to be like other feminines would be, that you have a certain grace, a certain humility, like it feels like these DMs are in like this armor, uh, amorous state, armor, <laughs> amorous state where they recognize that you know them, that you, you are aware of their faults. You are aware of what they've been through, that you know the intent of their heart and that it was like, you know, even in certain spaces where they may have actually like in a, in a how do we put it? They may have done stuff with the karmic that was intent to hurt you, though they were in such a dark night of the soul and so wrapped up in the karmic spell work that it was projections. Like it was them being told to think of you as different than you are. And so by that logic, they were not actually trying to hurt you. They were hurting a version of you that they believed you to be because of all of the voices they were surrounded by that reflected their own shadows. And a lot of them are coming in trying to figure out how to articulate that. And it might be a little bit messy because they've not, they're not used to articulating that sort of thing. And some of them worry about finding the right words, though some of them also have been in karmic cycles because they've been constantly worried about what are the right words and how, you know, what if I say the wrong words and this blows up and they're now in this space where they're recognizing it's okay if it's not the perfect words, if it's not the perfect timing, if it's not the, you know, the perfect image, they're okay if some people are not okay with them coming towards you, like they're okay with things in their life changing in ways that they might not be able to predict in some ways, you know, they're kind of learning that like you can't have pleasant surprises in life if you need to know everything, if you need to predict everything. And they're reflecting in this state of like, are they ready to be loved? They're thinking about that, like they know you know how to love them like nobody else does. They know that you can intuit their feelings and emotions and things like that. They know that you are attuned to them and they're kind of in this like state of trying to decide whether they feel like they are ready to be loved, which is interesting to feel from them. Anyways, I'm going to leave this message here. Take the parts that resonate. Don't worry about the rest. It's for someone else.